So we only seem to get contacted now as a company when it's a weird, quirky, unusual job, which to be honest with you, I'm not complaining because I love it. <laughs> I've got Chester doing all the normal human electrical stuff. Not just any hammer. This is Milwaukee hammer. And I'm out here setting the world to right in the quirky corners of the electrical industry. I reckon that'll take you back. Grab oh, it. You actually dropped it. Do you remember the job where we did like a little offshore power unit for a shed? That's great, that's been working tremendously, but now they want more power. Power! They're very limited on the surface area that they have. However, they are also building a gangway out, like a, a little roofed walkway. And if you remember, that was a really long way. That was a long old journey. The idea that we've got is instead of putting a roof on this thing, because it's only for shading, obviously we don't want it to be waterproof and we don't want it to be airtight because otherwise the wind uplift on it is going to be insane and they'll end up with their marina over in Blumen south of France. Is it possible to wrap this walkway with solar panels on the roof, maybe even on the side, basically build like a little shaded tunnel completely out of solar panels? Solar panels now are cheaper than fence posts, they're cheaper than a lot of sheets of wood, and they generate power and have a payback time. So this could be a no-brainer, but we've got to figure out a way to do it. So that's what we're going to go and work out today. And genuinely, I don't really have an idea of how I'm going to do it yet, but when we get there, we'll figure it out together. Along this long walkway, both directions, we'll be looking basically at installing this. So it's a hot dip galve frame, which is gonna be used to basically just provide shelter for the guys walking down here, going out to their boats. We can either have a panel per section, because you see it kind of comes down like this, or, and I mean, this stuff is strong as well, like literally, that is completely. Other option, which I've bought enough Unistrut for it, is we can mount them this way. So rest the rail on top of these bars here. Instead, couple them, extend them, and have the panels sort of going down that way. And again, absolutely, there's no, no flex in that whatsoever. Just does feel a bit wrong. Attaching panels like that to Unistra, and also I'm gonna be butchering a clamp, a panel clamp, as you will see. If you haven't seen the episode already, this is the system we installed. It lives behind this little custom-built insulated GRP enclosure. It is the Anker Solix X1. Now we've used that because of its corrosion resistance, its ability to work off grid, and it has been functioning absolutely beautifully all the way far from shore. However, we've now got to run a cable from here over to the frame itself over there. Now we've opted to run Doncaster Cable's PV Ultra Cable. If you've not seen it already, it's a fantastic innovation. We'll show you it as we strip it, but basically it's a, it is a bunch of PV cables jacketed inside of another sheath, which is very safe, very well protected. We're gonna be clipping that along the back side of the pontoon here and getting it run in, so yeah. The idea that I've got is basically use a solar clamp like this. So this would clamp onto the rail and then it will screw down into it like that, but it's just an M8 bolt. So I've removed the bottom portion of that clamp, which goes onto the rail, and basically just screwed in a normal M8 Zeb. That is what will sit inside of the Unistrut, and I'm hoping we can mount the panels on with that. First things first, let's get our strut up in place and fixed down. Oh, and I forgot my blinking tape measure. Right, time for another long walk. When I say walk, what I actually mean is steal a bike. <laughs> this is way better. My chain of thoughts just slipped, but I can tell already we're gearing up for a great day. So to join these things together, these two lengths of Unistrat, a little bit more sturdy, I'm gonna be using these couplers. So these right here are the Zebedees or the channel nuts. I've gone for long spring ones because as you'll see, they just push in, spin, you can get your bolt through there. It'll be absolutely solid. Four of those in with um, some bolts and washers, which Nathan has very kindly just gone to grab for me. In the meantime, we can get this measured up and installed. The rocking of the boat makes it so much harder. While we're waiting for Nathan, I reckon 400. One. Where is he with that tape measure, man? As the old saying goes, measure twice, cut once. We've got all of our rails on, all of our zebs in place and tightened up, but before we actually fix these things down, we're just gonna double check the measurements on the panels. Looking at 
1130mm or for our Americans uh, about 11 bald faced eagles we centre it off of this 245 minus 113 it's 132 divided by 2 we want it about 66 centimetres off of each edge about there looking at all of the measurements and double checking them against the panels this is looking very good seems about right doesn't it now unfortunately it was only after drilling that i'd realized that i'd been an absolute sausage roll i forgot <laughs> with these obviously i'm i'm working out the 66 centimeters from the edge that's to the edge of the panel i need to work out as well the clamping zone so if the panel is going there, I then want to come in another 30 or so mil to allow for the, uh, the clamping zone on the panel. So actually, I want our centre to be there. What a wally. So it'd be 96 mil instead. 96 mil. Oh, I've been really dumb. We're laying the panels that way not that way which means i've got my measurement on this side i need to get my measurement on this side of the panel portrait length so it's 176 so i need to do that same thing again it'd be 69.5 or we'll make it 70 so they actually want to be 70 from the edge Ugh. after much confusion about the orientation of the panels and measurements along with clamping zones i come to another realization which was by sheer luck we've actually got jammy there we're all right 120 still falls within the clamping zone of the panel. False alarm, we can keep it where it is. What can I say? My brain went out for a snack and it never came back. All right, so we've got the panels up, but the idea now that we've got is we're going to chop the unistrap flush here, but you see where the panels come up and meet? I want to get a double-sided foam tape and then stick the panels together with that seal so that all the way down we'll do like banks with brakes every so often for expansion and contraction and things but that way when it rains the worst of the water will run off so that you're not just going to get the benefit of being in the shade you're also getting the benefit of it being watertight one of my viewers if you've got a walkway that you need this on or even a cola a cola carport even if you've got a solar carport why couldn't we just build this frame out a little bit wider make a nice little waterproof roof out of solar panels because as well see these panels these are bifacial so we're getting solar generation not just from the top but also from the bottom and water is by nature very reflective so we're getting the reflection as well as the pattern of generation on the top i think these are going to be absolutely booming it out if you don't end up with galve nails did you even do galve work last but not least end caps if you're using unistrut without end caps you are a savage Time then to break out the world's heaviest ladder and see if Clenergy mixed with Unistrut actually works or if it is a complete and total bodge up. Alrighty, welcome to the up top. I'm not sure whether that's a bodge or a genius move, but pop a Zeb inside, have it like that. I mean, I don't see why not. I don't really, I don't really see the difference with doing that. So we'll try it, eh? Yeah, we'll do it by eye first, shall we? As I've already banged on about quite a few times while working out on the water, it's really hard to get true level. And how about squareness? Is that about square? There's lots of different methods you can use, like the old 345 yeah. method, trigonometry, trying to just measure things off to make sure things are square, true and plumb. Because what is plumb when you're on a moving pontoon? It looks to me to be good. Having two people, so someone underneath you to sort of eye things up and line things up by eye sometimes is the best and maybe even the only way to do it when you're in these situations. Oh, it's a little bit too far off. Right, let's check that. Yeah, it's a lot of back and forth and a lot of work. Spin that way a bit because it's not quite parallel with that bar. It's going nowhere. That works perfectly. We've got the cable clipped across and temporarily cable tied up here until I can go get myself some longer self tapper screws to fix into this. So I'm gonna use two of the four cores of this cable here. They're identified. So you have these two are paired up. You see they're darker inside. That is my little accident. And then these two with the white stripes inside, these two are paired up. So for now, I'm gonna leave them spare, ready to connect. 
so that if they want to go further, they've got the option to have another string and another MPPT over here. Let's just tuck these inside of the unit strap. But like I say, this really is a prototype, really. More just seeing what's possible. Right, that now is done, ready to extend. So what's gonna happen next is we've got to have more of this fabricated, this hot dipped gal stuff made up. It's gonna run the whole way along the pontoon. The other thing I wanna do, get a little rubber gasket to go inside of here, and then that will be mwah, chef's kiss. Absolutely beautiful. That has worked perfectly and easily. Do you know what else works perfectly and easily? Tradeify. My business runs while I'm working because you know, if you're a tradie, you can't afford to be taking calls all day, on the phone all day. Let people fill out an inquiries form. Tradeify provides that as well as a free website. They have sponsored this episode and man, that was a seamless ad integration. Thanks for watching, see you next time.